You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. It's a big world out there, and you're just looking for a pat on the back or head. You run around the city, searching for a place to bark, working your tail off with your nose to the ground, sniffing for a few scraps, hoping someone will throw you a bone. You take each lead, collar after collar, hoping one day to take a bite out of success and become the top dog. Fortunately, you come home each day to open arms, open cans, a drink waiting for you, and a comfortable place in front of the TV set. You know you've got it good, really good, because after all, it's a doggy dog world out there. Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with your host, pet expert, and award winning author, Liz Palaika, and this week's co hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Welcome to It's a Doggy Dog World. I'm your host, Liz Palaika, and with me today are my good friends, Petra Burke and Kate Abbott from Kindred Spirits Canine Education Center in Vista, California. Uh, also with us, in case you hear them breathing in the background, are Keely the Pomeranian, uh, Kona and Bashir the Aussies, uh, Walter, who had the, one of the littlest dogs on the bed, Walter the Cockapoo, and we've got a friend's dog, Ludwig the German Shepherd. Uh, we brought all of the dogs in today so we can have a little input on house training. Maybe they'll give us, oh, you heard Keely growl. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about house training, all of the ways that you can make your dog successful, including, you know, setting up a schedule for your dog, helping your dog, teaching him a command to relieve himself, and then we'll also talk about some of the problems and pitfalls that we sometimes run into when we're talking to dog owners in our training classes. But first, hold on, we we'll give a brief time for our sponsors. So hold on, don't go away. We'll be right back. Sit. Stay. It's a doggy dog world. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. School's in session on Pet Life Radio with Teacher's Pet. Learn how to communicate with your pet, train your pet, and see the world from your pet's point of view. You may even learn a few tricks yourself. Teacher's Pet with pet expert and author Sarah Wilson. Only on PetLifeRadio.com. Pets are part of the family, and when traveling with your dog, there's only one magazine to include when packing your doggy's duffel bag, and that's Fido Friendly, the travel and lifestyle magazine for you and your dog. Each bi-monthly issue includes hotel, city and state reviews, and doggy destinations to explore with your furry companion. Fido Friendly magazine can be found at Borders, Barnes & Noble, PetSmart, Pet Boutiques, and Fido Friendly hotels nationwide. Or you can go online to subscribe at www.fidofriendly.com. So get traveling with your pet today and leave no dog behind. And remember, Fido Friendly's the only magazine dedicated to the travel lifestyle of man's best friend and the one magazine your dog will thank you for. Ready to take a walk? Not just you, but your whole family. It's the 2008 Whisker Walk, Sunday, June 8th from 9 to 4 at the Lancaster Fairground in Lancaster, Massachusetts. Pet owners and animal lovers walk to lend a paw to benefit the animal shelters and pet charities they love. Come see exhibits, demonstrations, educational programs, special attractions, product giveaways, entertainment, auctions, raffles, food, fun, and things for adults and kids to see, do, and buy, both human and pet related. Whisker Walk 2008, a fun day for everyone. For more information, log on to whiskerwalk.org. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We know you're begging for more. So back to It's a Doggy Dog World with your fetching hosts, Liz Palaika, and this week's co-hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Welcome back to It's a Doggy Dog World. I'm your host, Liz Palaika. Petra and Kate are with me. And today we're talking about house training. So let's see, my definition of house training, when I'm to house training a puppy, 
Um, I want my dogs to relieve themselves on command. I want them to at least try. Even if the bladder's not full, I want them to squeeze out a drop if there's a drop in there. <laughs> yeah. I want them to keep the house clean. I don't want any accidents in the house. I want them to keep their crate clean. And when I've got boys, I don't allow my boys to lift their leg on any vertical upright surface. Oh, God, that's nasty. <laughs> that's a scuffle. So that's yeah. my definition. How about you two? Anything uh, that you require of your dogs? You know, I have to agree with Liz. No pooping in the house. No leg lifting. Because Walter's a therapy dog, I really, really enjoy the go on command. Mm -hmm. so that I can be sure that he's emptied everything before we go into a nursing home or other facility. Or when mm -hmm. you want to go to bed and they have to go pee before yeah. bed. Go inside, quick, 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 go potty. <laughs> <laughs> I have to admit, Riker's a, a bad one for that. He'll lay on his bed and be all comfy, and it's time to go to bed. It's like, do you have to go outside? Uh-uh. And then at 3 o'clock, okay, got to go. <laughs> yeah. Crossing so, their legs. So I have learned to make him go outside, and I tell him, go potty, and yeah. uh, and he does it, and then we make it through the night. Yeah, Which Teddy's the same way. The only addendum I can think of is uh, so your dog lets you know when they do need to go outside if it's off true. schedule. True, true. True. That's a good one too. Although I don't uh I don't like teaching my dogs to bark right. since since we do run into problem barkers. All right. Well, let's let's get started at the beginning then. You bring home this brand new puppy or this recently adopted rescue dog or adopted dog from the shelter and how do we start? Well, one thing you know on people's oh was a rescue it's it's probably had such everyone's abused mm -hmm. every dog i i think they've all been abused is what everyone says let's come in bed in the soothing or it's a cute puppy let's sleep in bed number one rule no so crate training in fact i just got an email the other day from a former student who said a friend of mine is going to adopt a dog about a year old how long will it take to house train him <laughs> <laughs> And I thought we about, would be filthy rich if we had that down to a science. And I thought exact about writing time. back. Well, it takes seven days, thirty-six hours, and forty-two <laughs> minutes. Um, oh no, seconds. <laughs> no seconds. Well, I had to draw the line somewhere. Um, but of course, that's going to depend on their situation, how well they follow the rules, and what any previous training the dog has had, if any. Sure. That way. But um, what I did write back to them is it all depends on three things: control, and control. And control right <laughs> right yeah right right well the f the first step that I do when uh, when I start a puppy with house training is of course I introduce a crate mm -hmm. and I know a lot of people oh I don't want to put my dog in a cage or a jail but uh, a crate mimics the dog's natural denning instincts uh, I know it at our house when my husband's in the recliner and he puts the foot of the chair up Invariably, there's a dog under there. They like mm -hmm. that nice, dark cave spot. Uh, if, when we have a coffee table in the living room, we don't now. But uh, when we have a coffee table, invariably, there's a dog under it. They like caves. They like secure places to sleep. So a crate mimics that. The first thing to do... And that's what I tell people, by the way. I said, you got a bark lounger, you got a lazy boy. Sure. The crate will become the same kind of refuge and comfort spot for your dog if yeah. used appropriately. Sure. Very true. Right, right. So the first thing is to introduce the, cake, uh, the crate. I like to do it with treats. Open up the door to the crate. Prop the, the door open so it doesn't close unexpectedly. And unexpectedly. <laughs> and then toss treats in. Let your puppy go in, grab the treat, and run back out again. Make a game of it. And then when he's used to that, you can start feeding him his meals in the crate. Mm -hmm. First with the door open, and then when he's secure with the door closed. And the crate becomes a positive thing. Mm -hmm. Nice thing about puppies is you generally don't have any bad habits to overcome in terms of the crate. So they, they usually adapt to it quite quickly. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll tell people to put a t-shirt that smells like them in there. But I'm no not, expensive beds. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Frankly, I think the t-shirt does more for the owners than it does for the dog. Oh, it yes. It makes them feel good. Yeah, exactly. A lot of puppies good. bunch it all up and it's in one corner and they're laying on the the, the plain plastic anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, and then don't get a crate too big. 
Huh? That's we also like another one. The adjustable. Like those adjustable side Those ones. are nice. Mm. Those where you are can nice. put a removable divider and change the uh, size of the inside of the crate. Yep. The crate rose. should be big enough for the puppy to stand up, turn around, lay down, stretch out, and not much more than that. Yeah. It's if, too big. It's not a comfy den anymore. And it gives the puppy room to have an accident in the corner and then move mm -hmm. away from it. From it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the ideas of the crate, besides preventing problems, is teaching the puppy some bowel and bladder control, teaching him to hold it because he doesn't want to mess up his bed. Um, another uh, uh, use for the crate is preventing other problem behaviors. If uh, your puppy wants to chew or dig uh, or, or get your... Uh, shoes your leather shoes and and carry them around or anything else the crate can help prevent problem behavior but your puppy shouldn't be in it all the time no no and now it's just schedule feeding and that's important to house training to schedule feed mm -hmm. what they when something goes in you know pretty good when it's going to come out mm -hmm. <laughs> we cut out the water what seven at night six seven at night depending um that'll help the bladder control mm-hmm Okay, so we've got a crate. We've got a puppy. We're introducing him to the crate. What next? Well, and I tell people, you know, you don't let a human baby run around the house unattended. Mm -hmm. So thinking of the crate and exercise pins as cribs and play pins for kids, it's the same idea. You put mm -hmm. them in there to keep them safe when you can't keep an active eye on them. Mm hmm um, but even so, you don't let a baby crawl around the house unattended. So with a puppy dog, you can use a leash. Yeah. And then, oh, and then placement of the crate. Mm-hmm. Oh. That's important. A lot of people want to put them in the garage, and it's, you know, a nine, ten-week-old puppy. Put in the, oh. in the yeah, laundry room. <laughs> you know, <laughs> puppies, dogs are, are pack animals. So find a place, like we all do, in the bedroom next to the bed. Make yep. it a make it your uh, nightstand. Yep. Put the lamp, put your yep. clock on it, put a little cover on it, dress it up. Mm. Yep. yep, just like that, Kona. <laughs> yep, and I'd already been thinking about that since the puppy we're hoping, knock on wood, to bring home is four weeks old now. I'm looking at my bedroom going, okay, nightstand goes away. <laughs> time to get the crate out of the garage. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep, that's wonderful time for your puppy to smell you and breathe in your essence and just be with you but under control and safe. Mm-hmm. During exactly. that sleeping time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And a lot of the new pup, uh, I should say like 9, 10, 11 weeks old puppies will whine at least once at night to go outside. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to ignore that. And then they do start having accidents, and having accidents right. in the crate. So if they get used to having accidents in the crate, uh, it becomes very difficult in the house training. Uh, we've had some of those yep. uh, yep. issues with uh, people. Okay. How about house. telling, teaching the puppy the command? I use go potty. I know, uh, unfortunately, once you've taught one dog that and you add additional dogs to the family, it, it's, it's continuing. It's I, I like Kate's command, get busy. I, I wish I had thought of that many years ago. Yeah. It would be very difficult to start that now, telling two dogs go potty and one dog get busy. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, uh, what's the importance of a word? Well, something you don't mind saying in public. <laughs> oh, we had somebody, was it that said tinkle? <laughs> tinkle. <laughs> That's piddle. cute. Piddle. I hear a lot piddle. of piddle. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Put it that way. Um, and associating it with the act itself. So uh, what did one trainer say? It was like teaching them to trade uh, peeing and pooping for a treat. And sure. then it becomes so valuable that they don't want to waste it if you're not around. Mm-hmm. There's a pun in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like they want to hold it because they know they can trade you for <laughs> praise and for treats. Sure. By sure. Doing it on command. Sure. Although the, I think the verbal praise can be very important too. For example, with Riker, he's so food motivated that if, uh, if there's a treat out there, he'll hold everything and just sit in front. So... Uh, uh, with him, he gets verbal praise. And it's, even when he was a puppy, he got verbal praise in petting. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the key is taking the puppy out to the spot where you want him to go potty. Uh, either on a leash if you need to, or just walking him out. So, 
In teaching the puppy the command to go potty or to relieve himself, first of all, we've got to walk him out to the spot where you want him to go, whether it be in the backyard or if you live in a condo or an apartment, the, the place where you want him to relieve himself. Uh, the puppy's on leash, if need be. And then when you get to that spot, be quiet. Don't play with him. Don't, uh, don't do tricks with him. Walk him around a little bit if you need to get those muscles going so his system gets going. But I definitely uh, recommend the walking. Oh, definitely. I remember the walking. puppy's standing there. The puppy's standing there looking at you, too. What are You're we like, doing? Go, go potty. And the yeah. puppy's like, what? I don't get it. Puppy lay down, go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm tired. So. Do you remember the student who used to live in New York City with the Aussie? And she had to puppy train. House oh, train a puppy. that's right. Was From 20, a high rise. Yeah. 20 floors up or something. <sighs> oh, yes. So down in the elevator, out to the curb. I, oh, I would have loved no. to know how many accidents happened in the elevator. Uh, oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> But people do it all the time. I know a good friend of ours, Steve Dale, in Chicago has two dogs in a condo. Wow. Uh, I think he's on the fifth floor. Okay, we're spoiled then. Because <laughs> I can't imagine doing that. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, walking the puppy outside, w- walking him around, getting things going, and then watching the puppy. When the piddle happens, very quietly so as not to interrupt the flow... Good to go potty. (laughs) So many puns. Good to go potty or good to get busy or whatever command you decide to use. That could be a challenge with a little dog or a short-legged dog to know when they're actually going. Oh, doxes. Yeah. We see it in puppy class. Is he going? Can't tell. (laughs) And the same thing when he's, uh, he's moving his bowels. Same thing. And then when he's all done, lots of praise. Oh, yeah. The treat, the petting, bounce around, let him play a little bit. And I think uh, having all that positive interaction afterwards is very important because some puppies, especially in the middle of the night, know that when they're done, then they go back to bed. And so they may hold it. They don't want to go back to bed. Mm -hmm. So positive interaction afterwards. Yeah, if you just snatch puppy up and say, oh, thank goodness you've gone, I can get back to bed they're going to learn to delay it. It's the same idea with people that take their dogs for a walk when they get home from work, and as soon as the dog goes on the walk, they rush back home. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Another right. use for the command so that you can have your dog go before you leave. Then you don't have very far to go with your poop bag. Sure. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Teach them to go at home, and then you can go for a good walk to celebrate. Although I do think, uh, on the other hand, it's important they know that they can go elsewhere also. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first vacation that Petra and I took with uh, Bashir and Logan, his brother, when they were young, it took Bashir almost a day to go oh potty. Oh, gosh, I remember that. He held oh. it. Oh, my gosh. The poor boy. He had to have been ready to explode. And he's, he's really good house trained. Dog. Yes, yes. But I remember Liz going, go potty. Go potty. And I'm like, I'll turn on the water. I'll do anything. Please go potty. <laughs> and Logan relieved himself, and we took Bashir over there. See? It's good yes. to go there. But no, 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 no. I'm not in my normal places. Uh-huh. Yeah. And it actually took almost a, a full day before his bat bladder finally. And when he did. Oh, <laughs> the poor boy. Oh, my. On. On. <laughs> I may have told the story on the, on the podcast before, but it's it was so astounding to me. It's worth repeating. Um, being out in um, Death Valley at a gas station getting gas watching uh, a newer Cadillac pull up. Older couple got out with a little tiny teacup poodle. Winter and you could just see the poodle was frantic and just looking everywhere. And there's nothing out there but dust and rocks and sand and cactus. (laughs) They open up the trunk of the Cadillac, pull out a piece of AstroTurf. Oh, jeez. Poodle's eyes light up. Oh, thank you. And he jumps upon it and proceeds to eliminate. And then they took it over to the uh, gas station and uh, washed it off, put it back in the trunk of the car, and they all got back in and off they went again. Well, that's one way to handle it, but that's pretty high maintenance way to handle it. And let's remember, it was a teacup. I yeah. I could not see doing that with a Mastiff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's pretty high maintenance way to do it. But, you know, it, they were inventive and it obviously works. Which is part of the 
problem I sometimes see with uh, puppy pads. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of puppy pads in general, unless there's no other way to I'm not a fan of puppy pads. I'm not a fan of newspapers. Um, anything that teaches the puppy to go potty inside, unless, of course, you live in Chicago and it's January and five below and you've got a very young or small puppy. Ten feet of snow, you're going to lose your little teacup. <laughs> yes, that, yes. So. So in, in, in those that litter case, boxes now, I would and, much rather see yeah. people go for the litter box. Yes, yeah. uh, and many people who live in high rises in New York or Chicago or downtown San Diego, um, and have a tiny toy dog, may want to house train the dog to the litter box yeah. in the house. Yeah, uh, and that's absolutely fine. I mean, how many cats use a litter box and never go outside? Exactly. Uh, but it would be nice if the dog were trained. For both circumstances, inside and outside. Well, anyway, we need to take a break for our sponsors, so hold on. When we come back, we'll talk about <laughs> some other aspects of house training and some problem solving. So hold on. We'll be right back. Sit. Stay. It's a doggy dog world. We'll be right back after a short pause. Well, four to be exact. Fasten your seat belts, put your seat bags and sleeping pets in their full upright position, and prepare for takeoff. Pet Life Radio presents Travel Tales, the show where you'll get great travel ideas on perfect places for you and your pet. From Paris to paradise, south of the border to the South Seas, Travel Tales will give you cool tips on fun vacation destinations to travel with your pet, pet friendly hotels, and advice on how to travel safely and happily with your furry best friends. So, get ready to pack the bags and the bones with your Travel Tales hosts, Susan Sims and Nicholas Veslowski, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. Greetings, human. What planet am I on? Welcome to Pet Planet. Here's a copy of Pet Planet Magazine, Florida's most informative and fun pet resource magazine. It features heartwarming stories and informative articles from local and national pet experts. Excellent. Pet Planet Magazine offers Operation Planet Rescue, helping rescued pets find new homes. And it's available at 500 locations in South and Central Florida and 24-7 on the Internet at PetPlanetMagazine.com. If you're out and about with your pet, you may be featured in Paparazzi, Candid Pictures of You and Your Pet. For up-to-date pet-friendly events, activities, and pet-related services and products, Pet Planet Magazine is your final destination. I shall take this magazine home with me. Back to your home planet? No, to my condo in Boca. Pet Planet Magazine. Check them out at www.petplanetmagazine.com or 352-394-8578. It's out of this world. world. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. We know you're begging for more. So back to It's a Doggy Dog World with your fetching hosts, Liz Palaika and this week's co-hosts, Kate Abbott and Petra Burke. Welcome back to It's a Doggy Dog World. I'm your host, Liz Palaika. With me today is... Petra, who's getting ready to sneeze, <laughs> and Kate. <laughs> Love spring when it's coming. <laughs> it is spring in Southern California, oh and, and most of our noses are going to a certain extent. <laughs> so anyway, we're talking about house training today. We've talked about uh, taking your puppy outside, introducing him to a crate as well inside, teaching him a command praising and rewarding him afterwards. Let's talk about a schedule. When do puppies have to go? Anytime you look at them crosswise. <laughs> <laughs> well, first thing in the morning, foremost, when you get up. And I think <laughs> my daughter, don't, don't rely on teenagers to do this. <laughs> Even with our dogs that are bigger, she'll let them out of the, uh, well, Logan, let him out of his crate, and then she continues to get ready for work. And I'm like, Kayla, it's like you, when you get out of bed, you gotta go. Hey, poor little thing. He's just walking with his, heart, with his legs crossed. 
But first thing in the morning. crate, but not under the outside. Yeah, I was yeah. crate, oh, so I was okay. walking around the house going, oh, I gotta go, gotta yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and he's no, such I a good boy, he doesn't. parade following me as soon as I my feet hit the floor. The parade goes right to the back door. Mm. Then while they're outside, then I'm attending to my own revolutions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're both finished about the same time, and we all meet at the back door again. Yeah. That's my routine. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, puppies also need to go after they've eaten. After yes. they've played hard? Yes. Wake up from a nap? Anytime they wake up, anytime after, shortly after feeding. Uh-huh. Shortly after playing, or in the midst of, they're playing really hard. That's when the small dogs, you can't tell what they're doing. Are they sitting or are they squatting? Well, that's another point, too, is that the little ones with a bladder the size of half a peanut, mm-hmm. they're going to have to go outside more often. Mm-hmm. And then the boys, I think, are tough. The boys, puppies, because all of a sudden they stand there and they look at you. <laughs> and you're going, uh... you got two seconds to react. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Real so quick. that's the point. Okay, what happens if your puppy starts peeing in front of you? Ah, scream! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, snatch him up and get him outside. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They usually yeah. cut it off very quickly. Interrupt them, rush them outside. Uh-huh. Right. Then settle down so they can go again and praise them some more. Right, exactly. And if you find a puddle and there's nobody around, don't slap your own hand. There you yep. go. <laughs> don't bring it back and stick their nose in it because yep. they have no idea. What slap oh, your yeah, own. he knows what he did wrong. You can see by his body that uh-huh. he's ashamed. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. knows you're angry. Yeah, yeah, slap your own hand because that means you made a mistake and you didn't get him out when he needed to go. Exactly. And clean it thoroughly using an enzymatic cleaner mm-hmm. or vinegar and water, baking soda. No, no ammonia. ammonia. Yeah, yeah no, no yeah. ammonia. We don't want to attract the dog to the You've spot. got to get rid of the odor so they don't think that's an okay place to go. Right. They don't return to the scene of the crime. Right, exactly. Right. Yep. Well, uh, how about... Uh, Leg lifters. What can we do about those boys? Personally, I don't allow it. Neither one of my boys lifts their leg. Uh, Oops, Kate. <laughs> I unfortunately, was strangely silent. <laughs> unfortunately, Kate and I each have a very dominant male. And Logan was doing it. Jeez, can he lift that okay. leg at 10 weeks? Here's the big confession my female lifts her leg. Well, there's your dominant okay, female. Yes. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I agree because this little one here, mm-hmm. yeah, she'll do it too. Yes. Well, see, I consider myself the dominant bitch in the family, and if anybody's going to lift a leg, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> but having had uh, a couple of boys previously who were bad leg lifters, uh, my last several males, I uh, have not allowed to lift their leg. And I start when they're young. When, when they first start to... Uh, Lift the leg, ah, stop, interrupt it, and then praise them when they're walk when they're peeing normally, when they squat. I remember the and, first time I heard you go, good to puppy pee. Yes. And I'm looking around going, what? what are you <laughs> <talking about?" laughs> yep. Well, one time Bashir uh, started, lifted his leg about two inches off the ground, and it was, ah, you get all four back on the ground. <laughs> and then, yes, good to puppy pee. Unfortunately, leg lifting can turn into a problem. Uh, A previous dog of mine would lift his leg on anything new. Uh, A guest putting her suitcase on the floor. And and so I said, no more, not allowed. Now I will have to admit, Walter can overdo it. Mm, I watched him the other day, uh, Saturday. Uh, Ludwig dropped his ball. Walter went over and peed on it. (laughs) Oh, no. Well, that's... (laughs) Kind of what happens with the leg lifting um, is it's not just for eliminating, it's for marking. Yep, yeah. yep. And that's what becomes the problem. The little cockapoo told the great big German shepherd, you may think it's your ball, but I'm marking it. Yeah. And so poor Ludwig didn't have a ball because it had been peed on. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> now, if you have a problem leg lifter, uh, either one that uh, got out of hand at home or you've adopted a dog from a shelter or rescue, how do you stop it? I've never used a belly band. Have you found them to be effective? No. I have no. somebody who's who's using it. Yeah. And it's working for her. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, just so just maybe she's, an, you know, she's a little band. older, so as far as, you know, Sorry. not as quick to get the dog out. Right. Or, you know, to watch it close enough so... For her situation, 
it works. But I'd say that would be like the last thing is mm-hmm. try definitely the house training and, and mm-hmm. um, leash the dog, attach it to your belt buckle. And exactly. wherever the dog goes, or you go, the dog goes. Restrict us, a- restrict us freedom. Crate even, train him. Even more than just her room. It's attached to you. Oh, definitely. Because some of these guys can be sneaky. <clears throat> uh-huh. They can get off behind the sofa and hit the back of the sofa or hit a leg of a yeah. chair and you don't even notice it. Well, my mom had a problem when she was in the hospital. Uh, my dad is not very agile or quick. His health is not good. And when my mom was in the hospital, one of her two boys uh, decided to protest that she wasn't home. And he started lifting his leg and her new wooden floors. Yeah. And uh, that went over like the proverbial lead balloon. Yeah. So when she came home, she had to work with him again and get him back to being reliably outside. And, and it took a, a while. while. Yeah, it's hard. It took a, a lot while. of commitment. Dedication. Yep. It's hard to break that. Yeah. Which brings up a point, though, for an older dog who has been reliably house trained before and starts going in the house... I always advise people for we knew what get was get him going to the home. vet. Check them out. Yes. there right. could be a health reason. Right. Yeah. Right. If there are no other changes in the household that would cause a break in house training, right. Get him to the veterinarian. Um, a UTI could cause a urinary tract infection, kidney problems, senility. Um, senility. Yeah. Uh, with the female dogs, incontinence. Dax had some problems with incontinence before she passed away. We had to put her on depends. Mm-hmm. Um, which she didn't like, but it saved the house. <laughs> well, and she was embarrassed herself, so. Oh, sure, sure. She was embarrassed either way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, the other thing with the boys is uh, if you've got a leg lifter in the house, is make sure you clean up after him good. Uh, when you restrict his freedom, go search the house. Move chairs, move table legs. Get a black light. Or a black light, yeah, right? yeah. Turn, yeah. turn off the lights in the dark. Use that black light. Urine will show mm-hmm. up like a mm-hmm. neon, neon, neon yeah. yellow, neon mm-hmm. yellow green. Right, right. You can get a black light at poster store or, or Walmart. Any, anywhere has them. Yeah. Like, go to the basement and find the box labeled '60s paraphernalia. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> but I, I have still seen them around, even battery operated handheld uh, black mm-hmm. lights. Yep. Or I even just got a black light uh, bulb. bulb, and you can and put, put it in, it in a, a fixture. fixture. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But you that's get what the room dark. That's what professional uh, carpet cleaners do. So yes, in the evening when it's dark, turn off all the lights, put in your black light bulb, and then walk around, and you can see all the spots while humming a Nagata de Vida. <laughs> <laughs> and then scrub, 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 and get all of those spots because if there's one left, that leg lifter will go back to it. And if you've got urine in the carpeting, be sure that you flood that carpeting to get down to the, the padding and the underlayment, under floor. <laughs> right, because if you only get the top of the carpet, the smell is still down there. I know when my husband and I put in tile and we had our carpet pulled up, uh, the people who had lived in the house previous to us had two giant schnauzers, and I was horrified at how horribly, poorly, Those dogs had been house trained because the carpet was disgusting. And I thought it was awful. The carpet guys were going, oh, no, no, this isn't that bad at all. And I'm going, but I was laying on that carpet. (laughs) It was horrible. I really appreciate our tile. (laughs) I helped a friend clean up her condo after it had been rented out. And we pulled up the carpeting. It was uh, cat pee. Oh, yeah, all the way through to the uh, wood underneath Uh on the second floor. So we painted it before laying anything else down to seal it. Sure, yeah. Seal that odor away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with Mm -hmm. the uh, stuff that kills. Yeah, we actually just used oops from Home Depot and a couple (laughs) of layers of it. We didn't care what color because the padding. Just wait till somebody else pulls up that carpet. What did they paint? (laughs) <laughs> We're back to the 60s again. It was psychedelic, all just splattered all over. <laughs> oh, dear. Just used a good enamel. Yep. All right. What else uh, do we hear from our, our students about house training issues? There is the occasional puppy who does go on the crate. 
Many times those are pet store puppies. Yeah. Yeah. Because pet store puppies uh, are in cages, and most of those were puppy mill puppies in cages, and that's the only place where they can relieve themselves. Sort of the habit overcomes their natural fastidiousness. Right, right. It becomes okay to go. Yeah, so what do we do with those? Return them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you mean if you want to keep the yes, pet store? Oh, yes. I see. <laughs> Taking them out much no, more kidding. frequently and much more, pra- you know, with a lot of praise when they do go outside. And each time, really, really clean that crate. Yeah. Don't just hose it down. Think that's enough. Right. Right. Get all the smell out. Get all the particulate matter out. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. And, yeah, removing anything in the crate that would sop up the urine. Right. It's a little bit of making it even more uncomfortable for them to go so that... We help them learn it's not good to go in the crate. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So if you put a nice bed or something in there and it gets all sopped up. Or a towel. Like, oh, no big deal. Leaving it, leaving a bare naked crate for them. Yeah. And taking them out more frequently. And then what else? I don't know. Schedule feeding. <clears throat> being consistent with taking them out. Attaching a command to it. I can't think. Leg lifters. Uh, catching them in the act. Yeah. I think the biggest one. I just, it just frustrates me. Well, we saw the 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 urine spot so we took him right over there and stuck his nose in it mm-hmm. don't do that catch him in the spot on his, on his. i think the other yeah. thing that uh i've heard often is uh the owner of the three-month-old puppy who says he's house trained simply <laughs> because he hasn't had an accident if the puppy hasn't had an accident that just means you're doing everything right yeah don't change it yeah <laughs> don't assume it. that the puppy is house trained that just Uh-oh. means you're doing everything right uh bashir is a puppy never had an accident but i didn't really consider him trustworthy until he was six seven months old just simply because i knew he was a baby and the only reason he hadn't had any accidents was because i got him out often and i kept him on a schedule and I went out and rewarded him and praised him. Which then, so, actually, you just, I just popped in my head. If you go out for dinner or someplace, don't just leave your dog in the house. Assuming that they're house trained at four months old. Put him in the put crate. Put him in the crate. You're only going to be gone for a few hours. That's fine. You come home, you let him out. Straight outside, let him go potty. Do their business. Uh-huh. Uh, I've got some, uh, some students who do work eight hours and they can't go home. And there's nobody else in the house. So that becomes an issue of how do you get the puppy open and out enough. Um, some people have successfully used a crate inside an exercise pen with right. the door of the crate open and a piddle pad or something. And that would be a good use for the litter box. The best, of course, is to get somebody to come over, a dog sitter, a neighbor, sure, and let your puppy dog out. A couple so of times a day. Right, right. Crazy so he gets that out. interaction. I'm trying to think. God, it's been so long since I had a puppy. What did I do? <laughs> I think I was lucky as I've always had dogs that the puppy follows the adult dog. Yeah. And that makes it easier if you have a well house trained adult dog. That makes uh Definitely. house training much easier. Makes That's probably why it's so like much <laughs> training easier. I don't remember <laughs> <laughs> yeah, overall training. <laughs> exactly. Well, uh, I love that story uh, it's not truly a house training story but kind of when we were on the road in the hotel room and uh-huh. you thought you heard it all oh. Night. <laughs> oh that's that right is, that is in that one of our t- earlier podcasts on traveling uh kate and i were sharing a motel room we had walter and Bashir with us and i woke up in the middle of the night with a start my heart in my throat pounding i heard tinkling and I couldn't imagine either Walter or Bashir going potty in the but, middle of the... But, but there it is. I mean, we're sort of next to a busy freeway. There's cars coming. There's people going to sleep through all of that. Yeah. But the but, thought yeah. <laughs> that one of our dogs might be piddling in the motel room Brought in the middle of the night. upright. Isn't that Boom. amazing? Nightmare. All the noises right you hear, and you hear a sound of yep. tinkling. Grab oh, my up. glasses. Mm. Flipped on the light. Didn't care whether I was waking Kate or not, although she didn't wake up. Didn't wake up. me. <laughs> Looked around, walked it, walked the whole motel room in my bare feet, trying to find that wet spot. <laughs> Staring accusingly at each dog. At each dog, who were both laying there, going, "What?" <laughs> and then I realized that next to the head of my bed, a plastic water bottle had been knocked over, and it went tinkle, 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 and it was tripped <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> So 
Sure, he is. George, <laughs> she's gonna blame you. <laughs> and on that note, and it's that kind of vigilance. <laughs> yeah. That you need to do. And that's why Bashir had no accidents when he was a puppy. Being a vigilant owner, <laughs> keeping your puppy under control, <laughs> taking them out, giving them the opportunity, and giving them lots of praise when they do. I think one There's of the things. big cues for for house training is patience. Be patient, yeah. stick to the schedule, give the puppy a chance to grow up. Lots of positives, lots of rewards. Be consistent. Do not just stand in the back door and throw him outside. Mm -hmm. Go out with him, even in the rain. Or if you're sick. Yep, go out no with him. What. Gotta go out with him. Give him yeah. those positives. Yeah. And uh, teach him that this is a wonderful thing to do. On command. And for that, we'll call it a close. There's way too many bad puns in this podcast on house training. So for that, uh, I'm Liz Palaika. Thanks for listening to It's a Doggy Dog World. Patron Kate. Go with the flow. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, God. See you next week. <laughs> Having a rough day? Longing for the dog days of summer? Think your fun furry friend lives a dog's life? Well, find out everything you're begging to know as Pet Life Radio presents It's a Doggy Dog World with pet expert and award-winning author Liz Palaika. Every dog has his day, and you'll find out how to make your dog's day fun and rewarding every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com. <laughs>